Right guys, um, as always is the case, this is my follow-up video after the latest NVIDIA driver has dropped, 536.99. Um, I did a split-screen comparison, now I'm going to be just benchmarking the games and comparing the raw statistics. But before we get to the video or the meat and potatoes, um, if you subscribe to my channel, just head on over to my YouTube page. Please, uh, guys, I need your help here. Please just ensure that the notification bell is selected so that when I do drop a new video, you are notified. It really will help me with the algorithm I'm looking to grow. Uh, and then other than that, if you're not subscribed to my channel, if at the end of the video you find this information helpful, please consider subscribing and then naturally selecting that notification bell as well. Um, guys, uh, with regards to um, the latest driver, uh, just having a look at some of the issues on the GeForce GRD Game Ready Forum. Um, yeah, I'll provide a link uh, to this page. Generally, um, the first day the feedback is quite hectic and then it slows down a little bit. But based on the feedback, yeah, I can tell you one thing straight away and people that are playing on a monitor like if you're gaming on a laptop but you connect to a monitor i don't recommend this driver in fact i tested dead space on it and every time i load up dead space my computer crashes so if you're connecting an external monitor to your laptop or you're gaming on a desktop don't recommend the latest driver it's really causing an issue but if you're gaming on a laptop the results may vary, so let's get into it. So guys, all my games are tested at medium settings, except for the newer titles, they tend to be a little bit heavier. Um, so uh, Ratchet and Clank, I test at a mix, oh, a very low setting, it's preset. Uh, Return was low on balanced. Uh, Dead Space Remake is on low on quality. Hogwarts Legacy is on medium on quality. Resident Evil 4 Remake is on mixture of medium high and low on quality. And Dead Island 2 is on medium on quality. Everything else is at medium settings. Where FSR 2.1 or 2.0 is available, I use the quality FSR setting as mentioned. Guys, um, I try to incorporate online games to my benchmarks. I just find it incredibly difficult to benchmark online titles. So for the time being, uh, you'll see that all the games I tested are single player games. So single player offline. I'm sorry, I did try to incorporate online multiplayer, but I find the games with benchmarks you have to buy. And considering I don't like playing multiplayer games, I really don't feel like buying titles yeah it's sorry man all the free games uh yeah they're no in-game in benchmark so it's incredibly difficult to benchmark those games uh and then lastly i do test on a gtx 1650 laptop i've never tested on an rtx card i've never played on an rtx card so just bear in mind these results are more reflective of the type of performance that you can expect with a gt on a gtx platform rtx obviously is a different technology so it's going to interface with the driver differently. But saying all that, let's get to the driver results. So um, let's just start with the older driver, 536.67. I wasn't a major fan of this driver. Didn't have terrible performance, but it wasn't great as well. So when I add up all the average FPSs over 15 games, my total FPS was 1067 divided by 15 and my average FPS per game is 71.13. When I do the same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows and my total FPS over 15 games was 753. Divided by 15 and my average FPS or my average 1% low for over the 15 games for 536.67 was 50.2. Yet again, not a terrible driver, just not a really great driver. Um, when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, my stability for that driver over those 15 games I benchmarked was 70.57%. So not a terrible result, just not a great driver. Especially on, um, yet, yet again, I have to emphasize, I test on a GTX platform, RTX experiences 
all types of problems that GTX doesn't. So, yeah. And then for the latest driver, um, same thing, added up all the average FPS's and then my total FPS over 15 games was 1,075, which is actually my highest average FPS um, since I've added in all these extra games that I've gotten with any driver. So it, so it would go to follow that when I divide that by 15, my average FPS per game over 15 games for the latest driver is the highest average FPS I've experienced so far. 71.67 average FPS. And then when I do the same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows over 15 games, and then my total 1% lows is 769. Yet again, my highest 1% lows since I've incorporated more a bigger benchmark. This is the highest 1% low figure I've gotten so far. So once I divide that by 15, my average 1% low per game is 51.27 average 1% low, which is the highest, which is pretty good. So when, when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, my stability over 15 games for the latest driver is the highest it's been since I've incorporated all these games is 71.54%. So this is a very complicated driver. And let me explain. If you're like me and you game on a laptop, and you don't connect to an external monitor, I highly recommend the latest driver. It's got fantastic average FPS, it's got fantastic 1% lows, but if you game on a desktop and you connect to an external monitor, no, don't update to this driver, it's a trash driver, it's gonna make a computer crash, it's gonna cause glitching, it's no good. If you game on a laptop and you connect to an external monitor, same story, don't recommend this, I uh, could not boot into um, to dead space. My computer just kept on hard crashing. So, if you want my recommendation, if you're gaming on a laptop, if you're on a GTX platform, if you mainly play single player, offline games, highly recommend 536.99. It's got fantastic average FPS, it's got fantastic 1% lows, and the stability for this driver is fantastic. But, yet again, if, you, if you're con connecting a laptop to an external monitor, don't do it. If you're playing on a desktop, don't download this driver. You're going to experience crashing and glitching when you connect to an external monitor. And then, um, Wesley33 did ask me to compare the latest driver versus my previous favorite driver, 536.40. So that's exactly what I did. Um, added up all the average FPS's over 15 games, my total FPS was 1069. Divided by 15, so my average FPS per game is 71.27. And then I did the same thing with the 1% lows, added up all the 1% lows, and then my total 1% lows over 15 games for uh, 536.40 was 758. Divided by 15, so my average 1% low was 50.53. And then when I divide the, the average 1% the, by the average FPS, my stability for that driver was 70.90%, which was my previous best in terms of stability, in terms of average FPS, in terms of 1% lows, since I've incorporated more games in my benchmark. But as you can see, the latest driver, if you game on a laptop, if you don't connect to an external monitor, and if you're playing mainly single player, Offline games, highly recommend this new driver. But yet again, if you connect to external monitor, this driver is not for you. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you um, if you got any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And then as always, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now is the time to do so. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's people like you. Have a good day. Cheers.